would like to just do a, a praise the Lord song. Our God is so awesome. And um, there, there are many versions of songs of, with hallelujah. But the one that, um, that's on my heart this morning is the one that uh, Jimmy Swaggart sang. You may remember and recall the melody when, when we do it. But it's a, just a few rounds of uh, a word changes, so I think we can do that this morning. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. 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 Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah again. Hallelujah. 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 If you would get a handbook near you and turn to number 355. And we can sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. And we indeed do have a friend in Jesus. Are you singing with me, or are you just singing along back there? I'll go ahead. Step up. Yeah, step up. Are we on? All right. <laughs> All right. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a Thou wilt find 
seated, as long as you sing along with the next song. All right, the next song is His Banner Over Me Is Love. Now, we're going to need our hands for this. So, let me do this. What do you have in your hand? You have a book? Lay it down. You have your Bible? We'll get back to it. Just set it aside for a moment. Okay, if you have your baby, well, maybe you better hold on to them. But, <laughs> all right, but we're going to try to use our hands. Okay, his banner over me is love. Some of you may know this and some of you may not. Uh, I don't know if we need that, but try to see as many people as I can here with a short mic. All right, it's, it's probably in our praise book, but it's 13 words. I think you can handle it. Okay, all right. Well, the first word is Jesus, and we want to point at Jesus. We, Jesus is everywhere, but if we, if we do that, then we're going to look a little silly. So, and Jesus is in me, but if I say Jesus, that's just wrong, you know. So, <laughs> so we're going to just point up for Jesus, okay? So Jesus, everybody can point up Jesus. Okay, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Can we do that? Yes. All right, this is what we're going to do. Okay, so we start out, what's the first word? Jesus. Jesus. All right, here we go. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Let's do it a little faster. That's really good. You guys are doing great. Give yourself a hand. You did right. All right, let's try it a little bit faster this time. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Amen. Thank you very much. worship this morning. Amen. <laughs> I love learning those new songs. Amen. God bless you for being here today in God's house. Good to see everyone. As you pray for those that are traveling, it's still vacation time. My understanding is school starts next week for some of our young people. The parents are very happy. Yes. <laughs> well, I ask you to pray for those going back to school. We're glad you're here this morning. I Bunches of birthdays this month. I should lift those up in prayer. This is having birthdays. Ashley's got a birthday coming up. Yes, I think it's the uh, 20th that I got down. Ashley Clark, amen. And uh, Pastor Terry Sheff, one of our missionaries, on July 22nd. Kara uh, Saunders Woods is on July 22nd. Ginger Berg's the 15th. That's tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Ooh. Amen. Um, let me get my pages here. Ask you to keep in prayer uh, Charles Woody's family. He is young. He used to come to church here. Angela would bring him to church. He had passed. They had a wonderful home-going funeral for him the other day, this past week. We ask you to pray for that family as well as Randy Campbell's family. And um, well, God bless you for being in this house today. And uh, let's have an opening word of prayer. If you just all bow your heads. If there's something on your heart you want to give to the Lord this morning, give it to him and thank him. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask you to bless those right now that's going through so much, Heavenly Father, to give them peace and comfort. And, Lord, the ones that are celebrating, give them blessings, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for that. Bless each and every one that's here this morning and the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a children's message. We ask Ms. Caitlin Bean to come on up and bring that. And all our young children are invited to come sit here on the front pew. Thank you. And the microphone. Come on down. I ask you to keep Miss Candace and Shane in your prayers as well. Appreciate that. 
We have us a slim picking this morning, don't we? <laughs> How are y'all? Right. Good. Um, I do want to kind of just with Miss Donna, please just keep Candy and Shane in your prayers. We are a big family here and love them dearly and um, just really, really, really pray for them in this situation. I think we can all help each other when we're going through these storms and tribulations. And it's just so important that we uplift each other in prayer and also just being there for one another. So let's just lift them up as prayer um, just as, as they continue this journey. Um, so this morning... Our verse is going to be out of Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, and it says, As you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so continue to live in him. Keep your roots deep in him and have your lives built on him. Be strong in the faith, just as you were taught, and always be thankful. Trust and thankfulness. You hear those words a lot. But why are they so important to me? Because they are the two things that you must stay to, to be close to me. When you trust me, you are not worrying or trying to fix things yourself. When we try to do that, we carry a burden that God never intended us to carry. He wants us to reach out to him when we're going through things, to, to let him carry that for us. I love the poem. You guys, I'm not sure if you have heard it or not. Some of the adults I know have talking about the, the footprints in the sands. And when they saw the one set of footprints, that's when Jesus said, that's when I carried you. Praise God for that. Yes. We need him to carry us. He wants us to go to him with those things. Because if we're being quite frank, us mere humans, we're not going to be able to do that like he can, right? Right. So we need to rely on him. We need to trust in him. It said, you are keeping your eyes on me, thinking about me and what I want for you. When you are thankful to me, there is no room for criticizing or complaining. Those sins that trip you up by tearing other people down. Trusting and being thankful are choices that only you can make. And you'll have to make them every single day, many times a day. Just as with sports or math or any other skill, the more practice you have, the easier it becomes. This morning in our Sunday school class, we were talking about having the, the shield of faith and, and using that shield of faith. And we were talking about as you get older and, you know, just different trials and tribulations that you have, you know, God allows us to go through things to make our, our faith stronger. And that's what we were talking about this morning. And... It really gives you a chance to just rely on God and really use his strength instead of relying on your own strength. And to me, in my life and things that I have been through, there have been times, and I'm sure many of you have as well, where you just said, you know what, God, I just, I, I can't, I can't do this by myself. There's no way that my strength is going to get me through that because I'm going to fail. You have to lean on God and you have to say, okay, Lord, you have to get me through this because I can't see the light, but I know that you're the lighthouse, so I'm going to look to you to get me through this storm. Lead me and guide me. And in our verse, I loved how it said to keep your roots deep in him and have your lives built on him. Just how when the scripture talks about when a person builds their house, you want to build it on the rock. Jesus is the rock. If you build your house on that sand, the moment that storm comes, you're going to be swept away. We want to make sure that we have our, our roots deep planted in the Lord. So that way when a storm comes, or how all the other trees may come up, but when your roots are deep in the ground like that and they're on our Lord and Savior, you're not going to budge no matter how strong that wind blows, right? right? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone that's in your house this morning, Lord God. I ask that you would speak to each and every heart this morning, Lord. Let your message just be clear, Father. I pray for no distractions. I pray for anybody that's going to speak today, Lord. Just put their words aside and let your words reign, Jesus. Just let your words be spoken. Let our hearts be softened. Let us hear what you have to say, Jesus. Father, I lift Candy and Shane up to you, Lord God. I just ask that you would heal them, Father. I just ask that you would bless them. We love them so much, Lord, and I just pray that you would give peace and comfort. Yes. Let them not wait much longer, Lord. Help us be what they need. Let us pray for them and 
Just lift them up to you, Jesus. I thank you and, and I praise you for the God that you are. Even though we don't understand, Lord, you have a plan for everything. And so, Father, I thank you and I praise you because you are good. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Kaylin. Give her a hand. Amen. Amen. I've got Martha Cassell. Cassell, excuse me. Come on up. Playing for our tithes and offerings today. I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward, please, for our morning tithes and offerings. Amen. Hello, Solid Rock. Good morning. So, this is just, this is the stand by Hillsong United, and I guess I'll just be, you wanted me to do instrumental, right? That's what I thought you told me. You can go we'll pray over it first here, and then oh, we'll okay. get started. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, so, um, so who's going to pray? They're going to pray. Okay, so let's have our prayer for the offering. Go ahead. Martha, and then we got a special surprise again. Okay. Go ahead, say hi.
Beautiful. Stand. Amen. Miss Sophie, can you hand this up? And Sophie, come on up. She's got this bright light on top of her head, but she's got a smile yeah. much brighter than we'll, that. We'll put it right here where everybody can see her here. Amen. All right. And truly blessed. Amen. Good to see Brother Isaac Angus here with us today. God bless you for being yes. with us today. Amen. Uh, let's see here. Our round robin this morning is Reverend Nikki Lancey. You going to say? Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Come on up. Amen. <laughs> All right. If that's okay. Um, is it okay if I put this down? Is this here for... Are, are you done with this? Yeah. Can I put it down? Okay, that's fine. That's, I'll do it. You can just okay. take your notebook off of it. Oh, yeah. all right, that'll work. Just like to see everybody. This song is a springboarded out of the book of Daniel when the Hebrew children were refusing to bow down to the idol of the, the statue of the king and the punishment was to be put into the fiery furnace. The three Hebrew children refused, went before the king. The king said, I'll give you one last chance, to, I'm paraphrasing, to bow down before me for if you won't, I'll throw you in the fiery furnace and what God will save you from that? Well, 
they said, Our God is able to save us from the fiery furnace. We will not bow down. And if God doesn't save us, then it'll still be, we, we will worship him, we will praise him. So this song is called Even If. Well, it is even if, you know, right? Even if. I can't ever read that thing with their glasses on. Well, just to say, um, because our brother was, um, Brother Nicky was going to be doing the round robin today, I thought it was mean to do double duty, make him sing before he speaks. Uh, so um, he's still going to sing. He's going to sing before pastor speaks. All right. Contact. <laughs> Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Right now, right now I'm losing that. Stood on this stage time after time, reminding the broken it'll be all right. When I'm held to the flame like I am right now I know you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Oh, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to sing it is well with my soul i know you're able and i know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone i know the sorrow and i know the hurt will all go away if you just say the word but even if you don't my hope is you alone you've been faithful you've been good all my days jesus i will cling to you come what may Cause I know you're able I know you can I know you're able And I know you can Save through the fire With your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away 
If you just say the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. My hope is you alone. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Yeah. 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 Right. Brother Nicky, come on up. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was fantastic. I like that. Before I start, I want to call your attention to uh, something that I noticed a minute ago. Other than the little hippie chick with a halo that done a wonderful job singing, I thought that was wonderful. That was beautiful. So lovely. And her people are going to kill me for calling her a little hippie chick, but I don't know. It's just the way I talk. But I, wanna, I want you to look around, and I want you to see the smiling faces this morning. I promise you, came into assembly i got some serious stuff to go over, and <clears throat> when you see a smiling face, big old Danny Hill's smiling face brightened my morning, Amen. and I'm grateful for him being here, him and his wife, and, and uh, listen, when you're in the presence of the Lord, isn't it good? Yeah. It's a wonderful thing, and we can't take it lightly, and I'll make my petition from that point before I start. Lord Jesus... You know that <clears throat> I want to express your words rightly. Lord, I hope to convey the light in life and the truth that is in the treasure house of your word. Lord Jesus, express through me these things. And if I get them wrong, then say to the ears of this assembly, that they need a little straightening out and straighten them out, Lord Jesus Christ, for we need you so. Yeah. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to talk to you this morning about overcoming. That's kind of like the theme, I guess. <clears throat> and I guess the first scripture we'll go to is... Um, it's in uh, Mark... The seventh chapter of, of the gospel according to St. Mark. I just want to run a few things by you. What do we have to overcome? Let's just see. Mark, the seventh chapter. And I'll start with the... Let's see. Let's start with the... Um, 21st verse. I'll just read a couple of verses. Now listen carefully. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Sounds like we've got a whole mountain of things to overcome. Have there been history, men of history who have failed to these things? Let's look in Jeremiah. I mean, let's look in uh, the book of Kings for a minute. First Kings, the twelfth chapter. First Kings, chapter twelve. <clears throat> and I'm going to read, uh, let's just start with the 27th verse. 
1 Kings chapter 12. Say amen when you have it. Amen. Good, good. And we'll start with verse 27. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go up and go again to Rehoboam, king of, king of Judah. And let me, let me set the stage for you just a minute. Jeroboam, the kingdom of Israel had been divided right after Solomon, King Solomon's death. And Rehoboam, because he did not obey the Lord, was given one tribe, the tribe of Judah, and a few Benjamites. So we'll say two tribes. And Israel fell to the people on the prophecy of, I think it was Ahiah. I'm not pronouncing it right. But because he had prophesied, the people wanted Jeroboam to be the king of Israel. And that's what happened. Now, we've got the stage. He's king of Israel. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, has two tribes that he lords over in Judah. Okay? All right, now let me continue. Verse 28. Whereupon the king took counsel. Wait a minute, did I read 27? I did read 27. King of Judah. Okay, and they shall kill me and go up. Okay. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, and brought thee up, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Man, if that ain't a bald-faced lie. But I want you to see how far he goes in one swoop. I mean, not only does he, he, he commit idolatry, but just right around the corner... He's going to ask God's chosen people to do the same and cause Israel to sin. Verse 29. And he set one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. And the thing became a sin for the people went, went, went to worship before the one even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places and made priest of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. Now, first of all, I would assume because the Israelites were supposed to have known the word of God and raised in there and know that the Levites were the only ones that were supposed to wait upon the Lord in the priestly, they were the very inheritance of the Lord, that he wouldn't have done such a thing to, to invite the lowest people. And God only knows what the King James Version here means about the lowest people. It's almost a reflection of things that are in our churches today. It's almost a reflection of what's going on today. King of, king of Israel, king of God's people. And he made a, let me read that verse again. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even the month which he had devised. Listen, in his own heart and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel and he offered upon the altar the burnt sacrifice. We've got a king of God's chosen people who decides to do what he wants to do and has failed to overcome what is laid before him, him being a child set apart for the glory of God. Let's find one more king before we go on to something else. Turn with me to Dan, Dan, the chapter, chapter 4. Just right quickly. Dan, chapter 4. I'm going to read one verse. At least I think I will. Let's see. Chapter 4. Verse 24. I'll read verse 24. 
This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High. And we're going to read several verses. Which has come upon my lord, the king. King Nebuchadnezzar had had a, another dream. We're talking about... Now keep this in context. King of small kings are in your thinking. Not king of kings like Jesus Christ. But Nebuchadnezzar was king of the world at that time. Probably the most powerful man on earth. I want you to put that in perspective, okay? <clears throat> that they shall drive thee from men, talking to King Nebuchadnezzar, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Another man fallen to the desires of his own heart. And we would be sent out for seven years until he realized that God rules in the kingdom of men. Amen? <clears throat> John, the 12th chapter. The gospel according to John. The 12th chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. I got hot the other day and it's really telling on me. John 12, verse 24. This is the turning point. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus speaking, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Many times we look at, I look at this. Scripture, and I've seen it for face value. I take all of God's word literally unless it says otherwise. So I always take it. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. If it dies, it brings forth much fruit. But here's the overcoming solid rock assembly. We're talking about me and you that are vertical yet. That are walking around on our two legs and two feet. We've got to lay, oh me, down. I'm talking about myself. I've got to lay me down. I've got to die to myself and live and let Christ live through me. Amen. That is my goal. That is my existence. That is my purpose for being here. All right? The value of this scripture alone would fill the ocean and more. I promise you. If you will take this scripture, like Jesus said, let these sayings sink into your ears. Let it saturate your heart. If you will take that scripture and die to yourself, we have the promise of God and the Son of the Most High God that He will bear fruit through you. Amen? That's right. We must abide in that true vine. That is a powerful scripture. First Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now, you know, we got a little hint right there from that last scripture about overcoming, did we not? We lay ourselves down. Jesus lives through us. Talk about overcoming. You're hitting a nail on the head now. Now we've got it. 1 Thessalonians 2. I'm going to read the 19th verse. Listen. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even... Ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming. It's good to be united in the Lord, is it not? It's wonderful. The only way we can overcome. Listen, I read at the beginning what was in man. And there is nothing pretty within us. Not a thing. Not one thing. I cringe when I hear people on TV say, well, people are pretty good for the most part. Well, that's not what the Word of God says. You do with it what you want to, but it makes me cringe. I know from self-experience and self-reflection and from the presence of the Lord taking that mirror and shining it back on me and letting me see myself that I am not a pretty picture, that the things within me line up with the Word of God, the things, the fallen things. But good news, I've been reborn. 
I have been rebirthed. And when I lay this old flesh down, when Nikki lays horizontal, oh, and let Jesus have his way, then I'm overcoming. Then I'm walking in the joy of the Lord and in the power of His Spirit. Then I'm communing with God and I can express to others the wonderful value of the blessed sacrifice of God's only begotten Son. Do you hear me? Then I can express the value of that love that bore my sins on Calvary's cross. That's what it's all about. That's what we're here for. Another way to overcome verse four, uh, chapter 14, St. John. Just one verse. I'll, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to read verse 23 if you want to look it up later. Jesus answered and said unto him, If you love me, listen carefully. This is one of my favorites. You will keep my words, and my Father will love you, will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him or live with him, is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. You want to overcome one of the grandest things that the Holy Spirit, that Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus Christ has taught me, is the power of his word right there. Right there. Nothing on earth like it. Nothing on earth like it. I promise you, thank God when the men of the Lord obeyed the Spirit and penned His Word. Woo! I love the Word of God. And I thank God for it. Just two more verses. Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation, 12th chapter going to look ahead in time just a little bit but is it applicable to us of course it is it's in the word of God and God's word is not bound Revelation 11 I mean sorry Revelation 12 verse 11 says this and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death Except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. By the word of our testimony, ladies and gentlemen of Solid Rock Assembly. Wow, that don't even sound right, does it? We're so scoundrelous, I, we, that don't even sound right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> God bless you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it surprised me, right? <laughs> I'm just joking. More than that, your brothers and sisters. Right. Amen. In the yeah. stock, in the stock and family of God. That's what you are to me. Amen. Verse 12. Let me read that one more time. And they overcame. These were people who were beheaded for Christ's name's sake. And they who overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Let, listen, you can overcome anything that the enemy comes at you. Who is our greatest enemy? We are. Let me say that again. We are our greatest enemy. <clears throat> Satan inflames. Satan inflicts. Yes, he does. He will do everything in his power to destroy you. That's his function. That's what he. That's his job. Who's made in the women in the image? Who's made in the image and similitude of God? We are. You're your own west. You're your own worst enemy. Think about that. But think about it before the Lord. Amen. Knowing that we have a Redeemer. Knowing that we have a Deliverer. Knowing that we have a Savior who saves with great salvation. 
One more verse. 1 Peter, two verses. One, 1 Peter, the first chapter. 1 Peter, the first chapter. I'm going to read two verses, verse 8 and 9. 1 Peter 8 and 9. Whom, having not seen, yet ye love, in whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. God's Word says, let God be true. And every man a liar. That's right. <laughs> now we're going to attempt to sing a song. <laughs> See my Jesus on the cross, the people crying. Looking on, a man would think that's such a tragedy. But what the world could not see when they nailed him to that tree. Listen, he broke the chains of sin and he set men free. Oh, if you know the words, sing it with me. Here we go. Love grew Flowers of hope sprang up for men in sin and misery. Sin died, oh sin died, where the blood. His precious blood covers me. Thorns of violence, thorns of hate were growing wildly. Oh, yeah. All the pain that sin had caused you know it was so very plain to see listen when the blood came streaming down the cross where my Savior bled and died he broke the chains of sin and he set men free. Thank God. The love grew where the blood fell. Flowers of hope sprang up for men in sin. And misery. Two thousand years ago, sin died, oh sin died, where the blood fell. Oh, I'm so glad his precious blood.
love grew, oh yes it did, where the blood flowers of hope sprang up for men in sin and misery. Two thousand years ago, sin died, oh sin died, where the blood fell, oh my soul died, his precious blood. increase. Amen. Thank you for that word and song. Amen. As well, praise the Lord. Uh, Brother Mike Duff, come here. Our scripture reading is going to be in the book of Psalms, from my understanding. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them you're glad they're here today. Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. Right. Good morning, church. And that would be earthquakes in diverse places. I think we're starting to see the diverse places today. I tell you what, folks, I wouldn't live in California for all the money in the world. I can assure you of that right now. Because uh, I believe Arizona is going to have some beachfront property coming up pretty soon. There was another earthquake this morning, too. I don't know if y'all knew it or not, but it was in India. 7.3 on a Richter scale, and they're still having aftershocks out there now. But I'm telling you, with all the evil that's going on out there in California, I'd be scared to death to be living out there. I really would. And they just keep defying God and mocking God all the time. And everything that they're doing out there is evil. I'm telling you that right now. As a church body, we know it's evil. We don't have anybody to describe that for us. And I'm telling you, folks, it's coming down to a dividing line now in our country to where you're on the right or you're on the left. It's, and there's a right and there's a wrong. So we got to make sure you know the difference. John Hagee spoke last week and said there's no way you can call yourself a Democrat and a Christian. No way. I'm sorry to have to say that this morning because we shouldn't be political about God's word because it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. But when you stand for that much evil, there's no way around it. There is no way around it, period. Right. Either you stand for life or you stand for death. Mm -hmm. that's and that's what it's all about, yeah. right there. So come at me if you will. But I got some beachfront property in Arizona this morning I want to give you all this morning. I'm telling you, it's coming, folks. I'm looking for California to break off. They're telling now that the scientists are saying that the plates are sitting like this. This is the ocean, and this is the plates in, in, in California. And when that plate slides underneath right here and goes out, it's going to carry everything off of that coast right under the Pacific. And you're talking millions and millions of people going to their watery death instantly, just like that. You say God can't do that? Well, that's the people that was down there in front of the mountain when, when Moses came back down. And they were celebrating the golden calf. You remember that in the Bible? He opened the ground up and swallowed them all up. So don't say he won't do that. Because he can do that and he will do that. And I do believe it's coming. I really do. I believe those people out there that's on that west coast have lost their minds. I really do. 
Anytime you can stand up and mock God and see all of that going on around you and the earth shaking like that, and you still going to stand there and mock our Lord? <laughs> I'd be getting out of that as fast as I could. Time's coming, and we're looking at it. We're seeing it. We're not talking about it and reading about it. We're looking right dead at it, and it's coming. That's why we need to get with that with our younger people today. And parents out there, I need to warn your youngest when they're coming home from school learning all this trash and, and heap that they put on them in schools. I mean, they're actually lying to them is what they're doing. And there's a time coming. God's going to make it right. You can, you can count on that. And I do believe we are real close. This morning I'll be reading from Psalms. I'll be reading Psalm 38. Everyone, please rise for the reading of the word. A Psalm of David to bring us to the Lord's remembrance. I'm reading from the book. You can follow right along. O oh Lord, don't rebuke, rebuke me in your anger, don't discipline me in your rage. Your arrows have struck deep and your blows are crushing me. This is David. Because of your anger, my whole body is sick. My health is broken because of my sins. My guilt overwhelms me. It is a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and stink because of my foolish sins. I am bent over and racked with pain. My days are filled with grief. A raging fever burns within me, and my health is broken. I am exhausted and completely crushed. My groans come from anguished, from an anguished heart. You know what I long for, Lord. You hear my every sigh. My heart beats wildly. My strength fails, and I am going blind. My loved ones and friends stay away, fearing my disease. Even my own family stands at a distance. Meanwhile, my enemies lay traps for me. They make plans to ruin me. They think up treacherous deeds all day long. But I am deaf to all their threats. I am silent before them as one who cannot speak. I choose to hear nothing and make no reply. For I am waiting for you, O Lord. You must answer for me, O Lord my God. I prayed, don't let my enemies gloat over me and rejoice at my downfall. I am on the verge of collapse, facing constant pain. But I confess my sins. I am deeply sorry for what I have done. My enemies are many. They hate me, though I have done nothing against them. They repay me evil for good and oppose me because I stand for the right. Do not abandon me, Lord. Do not stand at a distance, my God. Come quickly to help me, O oh Lord, my Savior. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. We're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 6, hopefully, in a few minutes. But I want to preface it by asking you, what kind of a week have you had? What kind of a month have you had? Maybe some of you a year or years. Listening to the prayer requests from so many this week, There has been such an attack of Satan. And as a result of that attack, many of you sit this morning thinking that your situation is hopeless and you're trying to figure out a way to get out of it. You've heard nothing but bad news. 
the doctor's giving you, every time you go to the doctor, you're going to get bad news. Has anybody figured that out yet? That's how they get paid. And you've heard one thing after another, and you feel like you're in an impossible situation. You look at what you got to work with, and you wonder how you're going to do it. Let me say that we will never get out of the hole that we're in until, like Nikki says, we got to get our mind off of us and, get, and actually get a vision of the holiness of God. Mary Bowley told me when we got out the car this morning and met in the parking lot, she said, Dave, Brother Dave, I don't believe anybody's afraid of God anymore. I don't believe they are either. There's no fear of God. There's no grasp of who he really is. We say we believe in the power of prayer. We may even pray once in a while, read our Bible, but we really don't understand the power of God, nor do we understand the holiness of God and even appreciate it. Because once you stand in the presence of God and you get a glimpse of the holiness of God, it changes everything, everything, your whole outlook. And you forget all about who you are and you're more concerned about who he is. Isaiah had that same experience. He said in the year that King Uzziah died, that was a, 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 a terrible upheaval. It was a time of despair for many people. But Isaiah got the right picture because amidst all of that stuff that was going on, he said, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. The word train literally means the hem of the garment that God was wearing. I remember the woman in the New Testament. She pushed through the crowd just to get close to Jesus and touched the hem of his garment and was instantly healed. But may I say that what Isaiah saw was the entire temple was filled with the hem of his garment. The presence of God was everywhere. And that is what I want to see for Solid Rock. Amen. I want to see it get to the point that when you walk into this building, you can wave your hand and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And until we get to that point, we will not be healed. We will not see the miracles. We will not get over the things that's going on in our life until we get a glimpse of his holiness. I remember Torrance Hedrick gave his testimony one time, and he said what got him saved was he had a vision of hell. And God let him see where he was hidden, and he said he didn't waste Another moment, he didn't wait to get to church. He didn't wait to call nobody. He got up and got down beside his bed and asked God to save him. That's what we need this morning is a vision of heaven, a vision of the glory of God. We need a visitation from him. We need to feel his presence to the point to where everything that's going on in our life just don't matter anymore. We've got to get to that point. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. How high have you lifted God in your life? How high is he? How exalted is he to you? How holy is he to you? Above it stood the seraphims. That's a a, a type of angel. And they, we only know of a handful of them that the Bible talks about. And they were above the throne of God. And it said, and above it stood the seraphims. And each one of these seraphims had six wings. And with two he covered his face. And with two of them he covered his feet. And with two of them he did fly. And they cried one unto another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the earth is full of his glory. Oh, to walk in this church one Sunday 
and maybe start singing, maybe start praying, and maybe even start preaching and hear people jumping up and crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You won't hurt my feelings if you do. It won't disrupt the service if you do because that is the most purest form of worship because when we look at God, we can't say anything else but that. If you get a real vision of who God really is, you're not going to be able to say a blame thing but holy, holy, holy because you won't even know what to say. And the presence of God can be that real in a place just like this. But we got to get self out of the way. There ain't a problem that anybody has in here. I don't care what it is that God can't fix. He can fix everything that's going on in your life. No matter how bad it is, no matter what the doctors say, it don't really make any difference because God's got the last word. But you've got to get yourself out of the way. And you've got to get a, just a little glimpse of his holiness. And man, I'm going to tell you one thing. That will put you back up on your feet. The whole earth is full of his glory. And when those seraphims cried out, holy, 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 it said the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. I look at that wall over there and I think somebody cried holy, holy, holy in here a few months ago. Because it says that when people really get in tune with God, it even moved the doorpost. The Bible said in the New Testament when everybody was in one accord in the church that the building shook. That ain't just for Bible times. This is Bible times, by the way, okay? Things like that can happen now, but you've got to get that garbage out of your mind that you've had preached to you for years that God don't do those things anymore. And so we're content to depend on other men and other situations and our resources for the miracles that we need, and we don't get those miracles because we don't call on the God that can provide them. Every single time he can do it. But you have got to completely forget all about yourself and your plan B. The post of the doors moved and the house was filled with smoke. It ain't like those mega churches. They didn't even have to get a smoke machine to do that. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something to see the building filled up with a Holy Ghost fog? Got to get right with God to do that. You've got to turn everything over to God that you are, that you have, and give it to him, and you can see the glory of God. But as long as you're hanging on to that plan B, as long as you're hanging on dependent on man, as long as you're hanging on to your sins, you will never see that. When old Isaiah saw it, the great prophet Isaiah, this is all he could say. Woe is me, for I am undone. Oh, I'm in so much trouble. I'm, I'm doomed because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He got a look at God, and all he could say was, Oh, my Lord, I'm undone. Woe is me. Woe is me. The cost of revival, and I've got this paper here from Mary, is a personal loss. Many of y'all in here understand what personal loss is, but maybe not the right kind of loss. When you, when you want to get a glimpse of the holiness of God and the power of God and you want to see it in your home and in your church and in your community, first of all, there's going to be a loss of time. Time spent praying instead of playing. The whole world is out 
searching for this and searching for some kind of new thrill when, and they're out there feasting when they should be fasting and they're playing when they should be praying. You'll find that it's a loss of sleep. Some of y'all that I know that are real prayer warriors, every time I see you, you look ragged because you've been up all night praying for somebody instead of sleeping. A loss of sleep will come when you want to see the presence of God. You'll be praying whenever the Lord tells you to pray. Lord, don't bother me between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Do not bother me. That's when he will bother you. You ever wake up in the night and you can't sleep and you're burdened? God's telling you to pray. And here's the real killer right here that nobody wants to hear. But if you want to see revival and if you want to feel the presence of God and all of that, it's going to have to be a loss of pride. Man, we come in here all puffed up with pride. I know Dave ain't preaching to me. He's preaching to Nikki over there. He's the one that needs to hear that. I don't need to hear it. What did I do this week? I'm going to tell you what. You're a man of unclean lips. That's what you are. The thoughts in your mind have been about everything but the holiness of God and you don't want to admit it for fear that somebody's going to look at you. Spend time confessing and agreeing with God how cold you are spiritually. You get on fire for God and you'll start seeing all kinds of manifestations of the Spirit taking place in your life and those around you. Then it'll even be a, a loss of food. I know many of you wish I would shut up so you could head on to the restaurant right now. <laughs> Fasting is still scriptural. And here's another one that's even stronger than pride. Loss of control. We want to be in control. We want God's blessings. We want God's spirit. We want his power. We want a, a manifestation of him. But we want to be in control. Man, it better go by the bulletin or God ain't going to do it. God, you can't do this. The bulletin says that we got to have this next. I remember that one Sunday morning, I didn't even get to preach, man. The Holy Spirit lit everything up in here. That felt good. That was wonderful. Loss of control. Everybody in here, if you want to feel the power of God, you've got to yield to God's will, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. Lord, and I came to that point in my life when I was 27 years old, I finally had enough. And I said, all right, God, whatever you want, I will do it. And only then did he turn around anything for me. Running from God is the stupidest thing you could do. You will go to hell tired. Do not try to run from God. Stand there and let him do his work. Then there's a loss of anything that might block God's work in your life. You need to walk away from anything that's hindering you from the Spirit of God, from the presence of God, and from the power of God. And it will cost you. It's a personal loss. But if you want that, you've got to give that up. And the need for prayer is so, so manifest right now. Selfless prayer. You know what we spend most of our time doing when we pray? Oh, let's listen to the modern day Christians struggling with the powers of darkness. Oh God, please bless that lottery ticket that I bought. Oh God, I need a bigger screen TV for the house. I need a new washer and dryer. Lord, I want you to do this for me and I want you to do that for me. I need, I need, I need. No, what you need is revival and you need the presence of God in your life and quit asking for things. Yes. Ask for revival and ask him to restore your soul. Yes. Earnest prayer is strong determination. 
Holy prayer is the dumping and cleansing of this temple right here so that true, honest prayer can take place in a clean temple. So many people want to come before the Lord and ask him all kinds of things to do for them while they're living like the devil. Not going to happen. There has never been a prayerless revival and all revivals take place after prayer. Leonard Ravenhill once said the church is dying on its feet because it's not living on its knees. And if you want to experience God the way he wants you to experience him, you've got to spend some time on your knees. It's time to evaluate ourselves, just like Isaiah did. He says, woe is me, for I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He was scared to death because people knew back then if you saw God, you'd die. Because nobody can stand before a holy God in the condition that we're in. We need Jesus in our life. Because if God looks at you and if God looks at me as we really are, the only thing he's got for us is judgment. But the Bible, but the song, rather, the song, there's a song that said, when he sees me, though, he sees the blood of the lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. And he's got to see that in you. And you've got to be covered with the blood of Jesus. If you're not... You're wide open for anything. Then we see that one of the seraphims flew unto me having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips and your sin is taken away and it's purged. Man, many of us need to get around this altar and let the Lord put a hot coal on us. We need to come and be purged of our sin and purged of ourselves and let us see nothing but the Lord and then you will experience his presence. And I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then said I, here am I. Send me. In these last days, <clears throat> God is calling on his people to go witness, to go preach, to go pray. <clears throat> but he's not going to drag you. You've got to say, Lord, here am I, send me. And all of what I am, send me. Purge me, cleanse me. Burn that sin away from me at the altar. And I'll go and I'll do whatever you ask me to do. It has yet to be seen what God can do with a man or a woman who is completely sold out to him. There is nothing that I want to see more in this church, in this community, anywhere but particularly starting right here. I don't care about the crowds. I don't care about the offerings. I don't care about none of that stuff. I want to see the glory of God in here. <clears throat> I want to see people's lives changed. And I hear it from many of you all the time telling me what God has done in your life. I want to see him do that with everybody in here. To where there's sometimes when we come in here, there's not much else we can do but cry holy, holy, holy. When the presence of the Lord is so thick and so strong that there's nothing else you can say, nothing else you can do. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I want to see for this little church right here. I'm more concerned about your spiritual well-being than anything else. You start doing that. You start worshiping God in that pure fashion. 
you realize that when you see the holiness of God that you're a nothing before him like 